Uh, good afternoon, everyone that's joining us um, for our webinar this afternoon. We're waiting till 12 o'clock, so if you've joined, you are in the right place. Uh, we're just getting ourselves ready before we start the recording. Uh, so get yourself a cup of tea on to the uh, toilets if you need to, because we're going to be uh, uh, on for the next hour. And uh, we've got a great lineup this afternoon. So as I say, we'll give it another 60 seconds. There's a couple of people joining in um, and we'll just get up all our notes. So it should be a good one. Bear with me a second. So about 30 odd seconds to take off everybody. OK, ready to go. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Welcome to Yorkshire's very latest webinar this afternoon. We're all from our homes and we're, we're used to that now, so we're not at the uh, steel and uh, red brick towers of Welcome to Yorkshire in the centre of Leeds, but we're looking forward to having your company over the next uh, hour or so uh, for our digital roundtable discussion with regards to, I suppose, where we're at in terms of a, the digital uh, sphere. During COVID, I think uh, all our um, internet broadband speeds have been tested over the past weeks and months. But I'm delighted to be uh, joined by some illustrious guests this afternoon. Uh, members of Welcome to Yorkshire, loyal members of Yorkshire across the, the spectrum as well in terms of how they have used the, their digital channels, their social channels, their websites, uh, in particular in the last few weeks. We're delighted to be joined uh, in conjunction with Erwin Mitchell, one of our Y30 partners who um, have really, I suppose, celebrated the Zoom, um, uh, Teams, uh, Google Hangout space over the last few weeks and months. I think this might be the second or third I've done with you, so we really appreciate that. A quick introduction to our guests uh, before we, we say hello to them, but just uh, in terms of housekeeping for all our guests and anyone out there, you can join in um, with the discussion this afternoon. You can join us on Twitter at welcome uh, to Yorks, our main Twitter feed or our industry cha channel, which is uh, WTY uh, Industry. Of course, you can join in on Facebook or you can use the um, the chat box on the side of the screen with any particular questions that my colleagues uh, Chris and Emma will be over as well. And also, if you want to go way back in time, you can even email us info at yorkshire.com. So a quick introduction to the guests. We've got Joe Theakston. Hi, Joe, from Black Sheep Brewery. Hi, James. Good afternoon. Nice to be here. Yeah. yeah, great to have you on board. No beer to share with us, or is that a bit too early in the day? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm passing virtual beers across across the airwaves to you. If only you could see what I've got below here. As soon as I go off camera, I'm not having a sandwich or a cup of tea. I'm just having a little quick tipple to keep me going. But listen, it's five o'clock somewhere. And at the moment, uh, it, it's 12 o'clock in our house. And with two kids downstairs, I think it's it, it's nearly black sheep o'clock. Uh, we've got Rab Scott from AMRC. Hi, Rab. Hi, James. Great How to be you? here. I'm absolutely fine. But if I see the groundhog, I'm afraid I'm going to kill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feels a bit like that, doesn't it? Here we are again, another day. Um, we've got Cal Mason from Mason's Gin. It's been great to see some of the, I suppose, innovation and success from, from our friends at Mason's over the past couple of weeks. And uh, Cal, great to have you on. Hi, Cal. Uh, moving swiftly on. Uh, Dorian Peters from Erwin Mitchell. In fact, we'll just do the Erwin, 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 Erwin Mitchell lot. Dorian, Rochelle, I think Rob's on here as well. Great to have you on, guys, from Erwin Mitchell. Good afternoon. Hi. Nice to be here. Looking forward to speaking to you as we go along. Uh, Sat Man from Lean Lunch. Sat. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Yeah. Uh, what is for lunch in your household today? Uh, it will depend what Joel, the chef, organizers so we've got we're still we're still uh working so we're production wise still open and apologies if i look like i'm in a white bunker technically i am i'm in the industrial unit in kirksell where we operate so uh yeah lunch today will be a chef special i don't know what it'll throw together so we've got we've got the, we've got the drink we've got the food sorted we now just need a bit of theater a bit of culture so kate jeeves from leeds playhouse lovely to have you on this afternoon thank you very much great to be here 
Excellent. So listen, it would be remiss of me not to do a little bit of a selling job on everyone first. So we're just going to bring you up to speed with a welcome to Yorkshire Rat. It's been uh, particularly difficult um, across the whole of the UK um, tourism sector. Um, but when I suppose you're responsible for a nine billion pound economy and 225,000 jobs, you know, the, the burden rests heavily here um, in, in Yorkshire for us. Saying that, uh, I'm delighted that our staff have really acted very nimbly and with real dexterity to transform from what is principally um, an in-person and events industry where we like to get out and see people and celebrate Yorkshire across the county and the world and for all its wares. But very swiftly, we took the decision way back in March to work from home, work remotely to keep our, our staff safe. And I've been delighted to see some of the output that they have um, they've generated to enable Yorkshire to be at the forefront of people's minds, whether that's uh, whether you live in and around the county, north, south, east and west, whether you're a regular visitor for a for a day or a um, uh, a weekend or a, or a longer stay. Um, we've seen the World Cup of Yorkshire inspire um, not thousands, but millions of people. And I know that Carl from Mason's Gin, who is hoping to join us, uh, was a sponsor in the early days. And that saw um, the likes of Bolton Abbey pitted up against um, the Peace Hall in Halifax, uh, the iconic modern steel and glass building of the Deep in Hull pitted up against uh, York Minster. And it really got people talking. They all joined into that social conversation. The purpose was, I suppose, in a way to use our digital channels for the purpose that they can be used uh, uh, efficient, efficiently, effectively, quickly, cheaply, uh, mass landscape to work with across the globe. But at the forefront, we were keeping um, the the idea of Yorkshire as a tourist attraction, as a visitor destination throughout. We've done food and drink, we've done restaurants. Uh, this weekend we did icons of which the uh, the Bronte sisters, so you got three for one effectively, uh, were up against uh, Dame Judi Dench in the final. But it's been a real celebration of Yorkshire and just one of the ways that we've tried to keep the kettle boiling. Um, we launched a voucher scheme in the very first few weeks of uh, lockdown, whereby we were asking people to, you know, pay it forward and buy into the industry. Um, the idea of shopping local and buying local has been on, on the forefront of everyone's sort of vernacular in the last few um, days, weeks and months. And I think now everyone's recalibrating. So it's great to have a couple of um, uh, resellers, food producers on today to talk about um, how they've moved towards that digital space to to capitalise to some extent, but I suppose just just move with the times and 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 especially for you, Joe, we'll speak about um, Little Valley Brewery, who I went to meet just before lockdown, who didn't have an online presence, didn't have any digital sales and actually only sold into supermarkets. So on one hand, they've done particularly well, but they've moved into a new space now. So there are some real entrepreneurial uh, opportunities out there that we've seen. Uh, our Y magazine, which is our flagship um, paper magazine, has gone online. Um, so as opposed to just a one yearly subscription, you know, people can download that now for free every month, which has seen regular, again, uh, contributions from all our members and, and other contributors. That's really kept, again, the kettle boiling. Our newsletters have become uh, more frequent, um, specifically with industry led um, communications, whether it's been COVID-19, whether it's been business interruption loans, uh, whether it's been advice on furloughing. Um, so we've really moved our shift towards being, yes, celebratory when the time is right and welcoming people back, but offering real hard business resource and advice. Um, tomorrow we launch our recovery plan to the media, which will go out live on Friday morning. The recovery plan is a simple document that aims to just uh, enable businesses to reopen safely and with the trust and confidence that they can do it with with their colleagues on on board, but also uh, without recriminations from consumers thinking you've opened too early and profits a dirty word. Listen, we're we're in a market economy and we're celebrating tourism, so we do need these businesses to be back open. So the recovery document is short term, medium and long term reopen, rebuild and recover. It's all about, you know, the short term enabling you to re reopen and, and it would be great to talk about, you know, Leeds Playhouse because unfortunately it looks like we're months and months away from reopening safely, uh, whereas obviously the retail businesses have started this week and the 4th of July hopefully we'll see uh, pubs, hospitality uh, industry coming back to life. As part of the um, recovery document, we're about to York launch a Yorkshire gift card um, 
at Welcome to Yorkshire, we're not for profit. So the purpose is to demonstrate how we can really work on behalf of businesses to act as a catalyst to get money moving around the economy. What better than to operate a gift card which locks spend in? So if all our contributors, our panelists aren't, aren't signed up to that, Chris will no doubt give you an email afterwards. A great way to tap into the diaspora of Yorkshire across the world, whether that's people that have lived in Yorkshire, born in Yorkshire, have got family connections in Yorkshire. You know, we do believe in our Yorkshire Together hashtag, which will bring people together across the world. And we've done some real research into how that can that can work and act as a act as a catalyst. So I suppose before we start with the questions both that are coming in online and some that we've got ourselves, if I could just go around the the group and and just ask you how you found COVID for, for in particular um, since since lockdown. There's going to be some winners and losers, and I suppose how you've used your digital channels um, to speak to existing audiences, new audiences, and and I suppose a quick you know positive, negative about the future for your business, but also the tourism economy. So if I can start with Joe, over to you, Joe. Uh, big easy question to start with, but if you'd like to go first, please. Yeah, I mean, I think like most businesses, I think the the big thing was the shock of COVID happening so quickly. And I think as everyone's had to try and do is just uh, adapt overnight um, and, and adapt very quickly. And, and I think we're no different from anyone else. I think we saw uh, a because predominantly our business is in the on trade in the pub trade so about 65 or 70 percent of our business is in that area and that literally switched off overnight so we had to very quickly uh, adapt the business fortunately for us we have a pretty well developed supermarket trade so we immediately started to put a, a heck of a lot of focus into supporting the supermarket trade um, and we were expecting an uplift with that as well, which which we, we got because there was no pubs for people to go to. So um, they wanted to uh, still drink beer, um, but uh, but at home this time. So we've we've taken advantage of that. And then certainly, as you as you were talking about the digital side of things, you know, we, we were talking, you know, imagine if this had happened 10 or 15 years ago, it it would have been even more catastrophic for businesses because there's just no way of talking to people uh, beyond your own community really so the internet and the and the digital has been a lifeline for for everybody i think um, and we've certainly t uh, pushed and taken advantage of that via um putting a heck of a lot of focus into mail order and uh, i think you mentioned that with with little valley we we had an existing business of mail order but it was fairly small and, and fairly underdeveloped, but we put a lot of effort into into really kicking that on. And we've seen some fantastic results with that, which is which has really contributed to to keeping the lights on in the business over the last uh, few months, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a roller coaster, I think, is 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 the way of putting it. But I'd, again, I don't think we're any different from any other business. Um, and, and, and I think part of the the, the sense of community in it all is that everyone's been dealing this, with this side by side. It's not one individual uh, person's issue or company's issue, which is which has helped to actually galvanise people and, and support each other, I think. Yeah, there are certainly uh... I don't think anyone would um, relish another outbreak of, of a similar virus. Um, in, in fact, there's there's so much sadness and real cruelty that we've all we've all had to endure and see publicly. But you know, there are many positives as you mentioned. Whether it's at home, whether um, in the last few weeks it's an, a re a re appreciation of family members that you've not seen for a few weeks, or things on your doorstep. But I think that sense of community, Joe, is something that. I think particularly in Yorkshire, we would say that because, you know, that's our style. We do celebrate, you know, our county and and, and our, the variety of offer. But I, I think there are some positives. And I suppose any business in terms of adapting has to um, look at a challenge and go, there's two ways to look at this. We can either mothball, curl up and die or, you know, take on that. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention uh, idea and just go for it. And, 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 and I think that's been great to see how Black Sheep particularly have done that. You know, at times the tone has been really, really spot on in terms of reflecting the public. Uh, remember also the right time to share some of your uh, customers 
uh, tweets about you know new beers that they've tried uh, or the delivery service and actually you know the people are delivering the, the beer for you at times like key workers I suppose to some extent putting their lives at risk to keep the the wheels of yeah. industry turning yeah I mean I think I think the what, what's been great actually is you know that that direct connection again with with your end consumer of your product which this has allowed us to do a bit more of you know a lot a lot of product is sold via a supermarket or via a, a pub so it's been quite nice as, as important as those as those channels are it's been really nice certainly in our local community to be able to get in touch and talk to your direct consumers uh, that's via the social as you, you say and, and the positivity that's come through through that physical yeah. connection you know just our home, home delivery service has just been been great and it's been a revelation for our staff as well to be to get that positive feedback from from you know it's like you are like a, the fifth emergency service delivering beer to people's doorsteps and they love it it's great yeah. <laughs> I, I know we shouldn't joke about all our consumption of alcohol during this uh, pandemic but it's been my daily highlight you know it really has <laughs> I don't mind telling you. Uh, and I've spread the love around. I'm, I'm loyal to Black Sheep, but I do drink anyone's beer. Uh, if anyone's out there wanting to send me any. In fact, I, we had your Lemoncello one on Friday. That went, that that that, that, that split the audience. I must it's a bit of a, a, bit of a lip smack of that, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. Uh, so moving swiftly on, we mentioned we're, we're talking about how businesses have adapted over the last um, two or three months. And I suppose particularly in the digital sphere as well. So it's, I'm, it's, I'm delighted to have Rab Scott, who can probably really give us hopefully some some trends, some insight into, you know, uh, digital patterns for both the, the University of Sheffield, where, where Rab works, but also um, across across the industry. So AMRC, Rab, explain Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre, part of the University of Sheffield um, and head of digital. So over to you, Rab. Absolutely. So during this period, we've all lived digitally. We've been dependent on digital. And as Joe said, you know, 10 years ago, it would have been a completely different landscape. But what we've actually had to do is we've had to pivot really quickly to support the ventilator challenge. So as the AMRC, you know, we were working with the rest of the high value manufacturing catapult. We actually repurposed a whole facility over in North Wales to put in a production line for these ventilators. And we did that, turned it round in 10 days to get up and running a full ventilator line, which is now producing the Penlon ventilators. And we've got so many lessons learned from that especially through the use of digital technologies and i think that this this pandemic while absolutely it has been a, a crisis that none of us wants to ever go through again it can only have accelerated the adoption of some of these technologies you know so we've seen the use of things like augmented reality the wearing of of the microsoft hololens to provide remote support so suddenly we can use it for social distancing because it can be a guy that's just the other side of your facility that is suddenly providing you with support with advice with information without being next to you you know so we're seeing that we're seeing the use of autonomous guided vehicles these little things that run around on the shop floor to deliver components again enabling social distancing so so we're seeing things being used in ways that we hadn't really expected to to see them being used but they're now in production and we've got those use cases we've got the the data to actually prove to people that this digital thing it's here to stay yeah, and 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 on that, Rab, it, it's great to hear that it's here to stay because part of Welcome to Yorkshire's sort of future strategy after a year of probably soul searching is to look at our own data. We're looking that we've got access to some 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 real clean and and widespread data. Uh, I mentioned that we're trying to tap into the sort of uh, networks we've got across the world, but in the last few months or so from April to May we saw an increase in traffic to Yorkshire.com of up of 47 percent we're expecting 10 million unique impressions on the website this year but 91 percent of all of all visits um, were from from new visitors that hadn't been to Yorkshire.com before so when you start developing the trend you know we're hearing that a staycation boom is going to happen because you know quarantine is going to prevent or 
perhaps prohibit people going on holiday. Brexit has 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 been pushed into the into the background, but it's it's coming. So we've got to prepare for that. So that means people from Liverpool, Scotland, London are now going Yorkshire. I've, I've heard of that place. You know, there's a coastline. There's two national parks. There's you know there's Michelin star food. There's 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 heritage. There's history. And actually, that therefore enables us to give. Um, confidence to our retailers and our our members to to open, knowing that okay, we're on the way out of the pandemic, but there's a boom coming. And I think if that's something that we can really harness going forward, then we should do that to offer that trust and confidence. I, I think that you know the number of companies that are now embracing digital seriously, and through doing that, they're gathering data, and that data is allowing them to make better informed decisions. You know, it's driving their strategies. We we heard from Joe about the home delivery. Well, you know, he will be starting to look at where the hotspots are in terms of where the where the greatest uptake of his home deliveries are, and that will drive his strategy. And yeah. you know. We couldn't have done that without having the data to begin with. So this this whole digital thing is giving us better insights, faster, quicker, and you know that can only help us in the long term. Indeed, uh, great to have Carl uh, Mason from Mason's Gin with us. Uh, Carl, we introduced you at the at the outset, but it's great to have you on board. If we can just carry on going around the table, we'll come to you um, last. But we were just we. Just to prepare you, we were talking about how we'd seen uh, Mason's Gin, you know, not necessarily diversify, of course that, but you know, see production lines continue and not dissimilar to to Joe, despite the challenges of uh, potentially furloughing staff, but then supplying to your existing supply uh, supply chain, using some real dexterity, and 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 you you saw that the benefits of sponsoring the uh, World Cup of Yorkshire as a way to you know harness. Uh, your brand. So we'll we'll come to you uh, last, if you don't mind, last but no least, of no course. Uh, but if we go to Rochelle and Dorian from Irwin Mitchell, so a, a, a firm of solicitors caught in that 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 service industry, uh, whereby not food retailer, not not uh, uh, you know not on the front line necessarily, but equally uh, offering real tangible services to people that are going out of business, the furloughing staff. Did anyone in your organisation honestly know what furlough meant four months ago? Be honest, Rochelle. <laughs> No, not at all. Um, and for us, for us, the main challenge is we're all about people, really. Um, so it's either our clients or our colleagues, um, the charities and organisations that we work with, businesses that we work with, and actually communicating in this environment has been a challenge for a business that is totally reliant on office space and paper. And I'm sure Dorian would concur with that. But um, we we have moved very fast. Um, we we were looking at smart working and we had to look at it very quickly and we moved uh, nearly 3000 people overnight uh, to work from their own homes, uh, some of which didn't have a laptop, some of it which worked in a call centre taking inquiries from clients and uh, people who do our typing. Um, and they are all very efficiently and effectively working from home now. And that was um, really because of our IT team and our crisis management team was just so successful in doing that so quickly. Um, and when, when we started this process, I used to sit on those meetings and I have been incredibly impressed about our people and how they did that. Um, we developed a website which um, is supporting businesses and it's got lots of information about how to furlough people, how to refinance. Um, and we've been running lots of webinars, um, which you've participated in as well, James, um, just so that people can get information very quickly. So we've been sharing some of our good practice. From a point of view of our staff, we've we've had to think about them because we've got quite a lot of people who are on furlough and we've got people who are living on their own and they're working in a very isolated way. So we've also had a people plan uh, to support their well-being um, and that can be anything from physiotherapy sessions on teams to, you know, line managers being able to support those individuals. Um, we work in very different areas. So um, Dorian's in our business legal services area. I, I'm actually a medical negligence lawyer. So we have clients who have uh, children who are brain injured. Um, they're not getting any therapy. Um, the challenges of all of that have been absolutely massive because, you know, somebody who can't move about, um, who's in a wheelchair, 
um, needs to have their physiotherapy, they need to have their education support, they need to have all that stimulation. And I know Kate will talk later about some of the groups that she's been supporting and the Playhouse have been supporting, but we we, we work with very disadvantaged um, people and groups um, and that's also been a massive challenge. I'll just hand over to Dorian, he can add anything from a BLS perspective. Yeah, very quickly, we realised that our normal routes to market, like I think others have mentioned, had to change because ultimately lots of people in struggle. Oh no. Or they've engaged face to face. That was that had to change. It wasn't going to happen. So we've repurposed our route to market through webinars, use of Teams and Zoom, etc. And it's gone extraordinarily well so far. Um, it, and I think I'm not sure whether we're going to go back to normal. I don't think I think that this is the new normal. Will be a mix of both. Um, we've we've spoken to our employee cohort, and I think the majority of them have said that they don't want to return to the office full time, even if they could. Um, so that is something that's going to be very different looking forward. Um, it's a lot of your property lawyers might be busy over the next few weeks and months with people trying to wrangle out of long long leases. If so, uh, can I put my hand up. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's I suppose that that's something we had a webinar on the other week, and I think we've got one coming up about you know uh, it, there's going to have to be a m huge degree of flexibility. Um, so all the business owners on here, whether they own the property or, or rent the property or or, or lease. Um, you know, uh, I, I I wouldn't normally say I'd, I'd feel sorry for landlords, but in this instance, well, I'm a, a small, small uh, private landlord myself. It's difficult. There has to be flexibility because, you know, uh, the supply chain knock on effects means that, you know, you could be left with lots of empty buildings. And I suppose receiving some rent, albeit uh, at a reduced rate, has to be better in the long term than mothballing in an empty building. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think we mustn't ignore the fact that we are on the on the verge of what will inevitably be a very deep recession um, and, and this is only the first step getting back to work getting those who want to be in work back to work those who don't want to be in the office but still able to create or um, give value to their employers we still need to work with them as well so it yeah. will be a challenge inevitably. Yeah. Uh, we'll come on to uh, recession but also the huge positives of 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 what's coming around the corner inflation uh, statistics have been announced today so a record low for the for in the last four years but interestingly enough uh, food prices at supermarkets going up so sat it's probably a good time to turn our attention to you um doing some research earlier you focus on lead city center delivery so therefore you need you know you need the likes of erwin mitchell to be to, to be busy and have lots of staff how have you found the last um last three months um, I think like everybody, and that's uh, not even just Yorkshire, it's globally, it's, it's been nothing but a challenge. Um, we're a young business, we're just coming into our third year. We were set up as an online business, so that's advantageous. Um, you know, the focus for us is being an online, was always an online food delivery business focused on health and well-being and sustainability and delivering essentially healthy food into workplaces with a link to staff well-being doing that in the most sustainable way. So we have cargo cycles here in Kirkstall that we cycle into the Leeds city centre and we have an electric van as well. Uh, we use compostable packaging, all that side of things. But I had a bit of foresight because I've got a couple of friends that live in Europe um, and interestingly, one in Milan and one in Munich and both of those went into lockdown ahead of us. And I sensed it was coming, but wasn't really sure what impact. So I was still as surprised as anyone about the impact. So we saw the early stages of that the week before the lockdown. Businesses, I think businesses acted faster than essentially the government did. I mean, the city centre emptied a week ahead. Companies just saw there was a need to get people home. All orders were cancelled. We had no, essentially we went to zero. It was we don't, we don't we didn't have another channel. We we had we were online. We had but all our work was business. So essentially, we went from the emotion of should we shut down and just close up shop to 24 hours later, how do we stay alive? To let's try doing some home delivery. And whilst we have already got the online channel, the complexity of setting up a new fulfilment into home delivery and doing it yourself and and doing that with a food offering that's quite narrow uh, led to us starting doing some produce delivery, fruit and veg. There was the panic buying going on in the supermarkets. 
And that sort of kept us going. I mean, we're really just about keeping the lights on. Uh, we've been then we got a client came on board that gave all, all the money they would have spent with us to a fund to support meals for the NHS and charity. So we've been doing meals for uh, vulnerable people and, and people in the NHS. And that's been wonderful. We've done that at cost, but also it's kept us busy. And then what we've also done is we've found that through the demand in the supermarkets, and this goes to your point about food, there was obviously this challenge around availability and there was a grant scheme set up by Innovate UK, which was a competition nationwide for businesses to apply for a grant to look at ways of innovating out of the current situation. So we saw the, saw that the two challenges we saw was food delivery, uh, fresh produce, to customers was a, was under strain and secondly deprived communities who 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 suddenly became i mean de deprivation existed before covid it's just become more apparent as a result so we, we came up with a concept called good box which is delivering fruit and veg to customers but doing it in a way where they contribute to also provide fruit and veg for deprived communities and we got we will we we got granted so we were one of 800 out of 9,000 applications to get the money so we've now started a little project to set up that as a separate entity and and then right now can sort of right now what we're doing is which is interesting is we're looking at what do we do with the business moving forwards because either we invest in home delivery properly or we think about the return to work and at the moment the return to work is as described there by Rochelle and a colleague is looking limited with a lot of employees wishing to stay at home. So we're thinking, do we offer a model which supports employees at home with healthy food as well as in the workplace? So all of that thinking has to happen so quickly. And to be honest, there's got to be some assumptions and some risks. That's that's the bottom line. I mean, it's um, and at the same time, you're trying to protect a limited cash flow. And if you throw into the mix, where does food sit within all this? I, I think behind the crisis itself, the pandemic, the, the, the horrible situation, the second thing that happened to my mind was people going, was the concern about food. We need to build some resilience into our food systems. And and I think, you know, so one of the things I'm, I also chair a not-for-profit called Foodwise, which is about sustainable food cities um, for, for, I'm doing that for Leeds. And we have to look at how Yorkshire, which is the biggest county in, in, in the country, with so much availability of space, how do we start to produce more food so we become more sustainable, not just for Yorkshire, but for the UK? Because I think it's, it's evident that our supply chain is really not that resilient. 50, only 53% of the food we eat from a fresh produce perspective is, is actually grown in this country. Mm. And if we don't fix that with Brexit looming, with potentially the, the pandemic and the prices going up, if there's going to be positives moving forward, it's how do we become more sustainable? So, so I'm looking at this from various angles and I think there's opportunities, but it's going to need investment is going to need some policy change and it's going to need some commitment to how do we come out of this above and beyond all these amazing stories that the, all of these businesses that are doing these things are doing them through their own yeah. resilience through their own resilience because they're driven people that want to try and make an effort but there needs to be some support for a bigger solution i think beyond just the here and now that's that's my view yeah, I, th I think that there's certainly been a lot of uh, recalibration on a micro level, as you mentioned, you know, people having to be dexterous about their own offering. But on a macro level, I think, as you say, you know, we, with a reliance on importing, um, often via air trade, but often via sea and road, you know, if all of a sudden our little island that, that, that yeah, is an economic power, all of a sudden we're back to basics and we're, we're agricultural and farming, you know, we, we've got to be prepared for this coming again, haven't we? Uh, so, Sat, thanks for joining us. Uh, so, Carl and Kate, thanks for being patient. We're coming to you next. So, I suppose um, in terms of the uh, arts and cultural space, Kate, we, we, as I mentioned, we've just uh, we're about to launch our 
recovery strategy which talks about reopen, rebuild and recover. Reopening is happening all over, but not necessarily in your sector. And if I could just read a quick tweet out that I saw from uh, Clooney McPherson, one of our, our friends and colleagues at Leeds City Council who works in the, the arts and cultural space. Uh, the Creative Industries Federation this morning have tweeted that um, creative industries are on the brink of devastation with a predicted loss of 400,000 jobs and a loss of 74 billion pounds worth of revenue. So as we emerge from lockdown, our creativity will be more vital than ever, as long as uh, places like, uh, you know, theatres in Leeds, Leeds Playhouse, West Yorkshire Playhouse, Sheffield Theatres, all across the country have a space to be in. And, you know, I, I won't say any more, but the, the whole purpose for anyone going to uh, the theatre is to have that intimate connection, you know, that, 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 that commonality of sharing the, 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 the performance, but not if, you know, there's someone four yards away or, or, or so where are you at this moment in time? And I suppose most of my sympathy goes to you right now. Well, we are, we're kind of at, uh, well, we are like everyone else. We're right in the middle of uncertainty and um, scenario planning and um, waiting for um, guidance and uh, rules from the government to be issued. And uh, we have at Leeds Playhouse, we employ in the region of about 200 people. And currently we have 95-ish percent of our staff are on furlough. Um, we closed our, we stopped our performances back on the 16th of March. Um, we paused all the work we do with arts. The way the Playhouse works is it's not just a theatre. We're not just welcoming people in to sit in a seat and watch a show on stage. That's just part of what we do. We also have a huge community education. We call it Creative Engagement Programme, where we work with thousands of people every year. And we also then work with local artists and um, emerging talent to kind of um, to to develop the, our industry of the future. And so it was more it's it's far more than just sitting in a seat, which is where the why we employ so many people, including freelancers. We're not employing actors. Our our um, our reach and our role in the economy apparently we're finding out is greater than the Premier League. So there are so many, uh, the culture, not, and that's just in ticket sales and the economy, not to mention the emotional and the um, kind of social mobility that we promote as well through our organisation. So we stopped our performances, paused our community work back, way back in March. And uh, the furlough scheme is, has, is so far the most, uh, is is keeping us going. We're busy planning the future. Uh, we don't know yet when we are able to let people through our doors, even to buy a cup of coffee, really, because it's all about the economics of being, uh, you know, about it being a viable option to be able to employ people to stand behind the counter. It's the same for everyone. Uh, what we but what we knew early on is that like Rochelle said about Owen Mitchell, our organisation ultimately is about people. It's about shared experiences and whether that is sat in an auditorium watching, engaging with theatre or whether it is engaging as we do with lots of vulnerable groups across the city and the city region. Um, we decided to take stock. We don't have a huge, we don't have a digital um, archive of theatre. We, we've never received the funding for that. The National Theatre, the RSC, there are others that were in a good shape to do that and we have done things in partnership with some of those. So our show Barbershop Chronicles, which we did in partnership with the National Theatre, was seen by 250,000 people. So we have been out there a little bit, um, but we decided that the most important thing and the most thing, the way we could make the most difference, the most impact at the moment was through the work that we do serving our most vulnerable participants within our community groups. Yeah. So we we reckon that in the last three months we've reached around about 4,000 people in various ways. Um, our, we kind of work, we work with, we're calling up our, hey, we've, we've relaunched our heydays. If anybody pops into the Playhouse on a Wednesday, you will see that it's full of older people taking part in a massive variety of creative activities. And we are starting to do that online in the digital sphere. So we've started a small, we've done a lot of training on Zoom for all our 
um, participants. But we are now engaging, so they're doing art projects, they're doing some drama projects, just talking about current affairs, keeping in touch with people. Our artistic director has been telephoning people, having a chat with them just to make sure everything's OK and if there's anything we can do for people. We've um, we've it's refugee week this week, so we've got a whole uh, plan of sharing work that focuses on, on refugees and asylum seekers. Um, we're working with schools as much as possible. We're doing a, a huge project, actually, a four year project with that's funded by the Burberry Foundation, which is about proving and it will prove um, that the um, creative engagement, creative education is really important within schools. Um, and so we work. So we're continuing to do that, we're essentially working with eight schools across Yorkshire to um, impact positively, to give them direct creative education with a King's College London research project that's on top of that, which will categorically, I am sure, um, prove the impact and how important creative education is to our young people and their futures. Um, we're working with uh, our communities. We're trying to develop things for the future. Um, we are sending out things by post as well. It's nice that some of our um, people with learning disabilities are receiving little packages from us in the post with that creative activities to keep them engaged because they can't always. We're really conscious of the, although the digital um, the digital world is amazing. There is a massive, massive issue in people for different, various different reasons that can't access and use this means. So we're really conscious about that and making sure that our participants can get involved in any way uh, that works for them. So we are working with an awful lot of people in that respect and and then working really hard. Our um, one of our chief executives is sitting on the task force that's um, working to uh, to open venues essentially so we are um, thankfully it feels quite hopefully right at the center of the decisions that are being made that will affect our organization in the future our hard thing is that we make the theater at the playhouse the, the stuff that you see the most of the stuff that you see on our stage is rehearsed um, is built um, on our premises in Leeds and without a sure idea of when we can open and how many people we can let in um, and then nobody not many people the majority of people don't go to the theatre by themselves so sit in one person and then a space and then another space it doesn't quite work like that so we're working about yeah. models with our box office system as to how we can put clusters of households and things together so there's nothing particularly straightforward about mm -hmm much of it but ultimately we're in the same sphere and then the whole thing about coming back to work from releasing our staff from furlough when there isn't necessarily anything we can sell that will pay their wages going forward is a real crunch point for us so um we will need people to buy gift vouchers and to buy tickets for gifts that will be very useful um we will need our um, support from all sectors of the community to continue the work that we do with all sectors of the community. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, we we keep we keep going. We do what we can and uh, positive about it. Yeah. And, and rest assured, Kate, we're doing a piece of work lobbying government. At the very start of this, we were lobbying on behalf of bed and breakfast owners that were missing out on on grants. If you were a um, residential bed and breakfast where you paid council tax over business rates, particularly up in North Yorkshire, where we've got a, a huge um, concentration of bed and breakfast. So welcome to Yorkshire, as far as I'm aware. I haven't always been you know, at the forefront of lobbying, not needed to because tourism is sort of taking care of itself. But when a crisis hits like this, you realise and you have to probably educate people that arts culture is a huge part of the tourism sector. You know, people come to Yorkshire for our vibrant offering, whether that's in Leeds, Sheffield, you know, Hull, um, all across the county, actually, the many festivals. So um, we're happy to keep banging that drum about extending the furlough scheme, OK, for yourselves, but also grants, but also the the idea potentially we're looking at um, of crowdfunding because we're seeing it with the deep for example you know a wonderful wonderful organization that is that has built up a, a pot of savings over the years from charitable giving but now 
the cupboards are dry, you know, so in, in real, real danger of going out of business. So we'll come back to that with some of the questions that are coming online. But Carl, thanks for waiting so long. Um, we've only got 20 minutes left, but we're still going to get a good chunk with you and we'll still go around. So don't worry, like a good pilot, I'll make up time. Um, so Carl, uh, um, no stranger to a crisis at Mason's Gin, um, whether it was um, a fire threatening your business and now now a pandemic. So I suppose a question not dissimilar to to Joe at the start. You've really um, used your social channels to to adapt, well, not necessarily adapt your business, but you 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 know you've moved into that sphere. Strong online presence anyway. Strong um, offline presence. Um, but yeah, just just bring us up to date how things have been for you. Uh, I, I could repeat um, a lot of what Joe said because we probably faced a lot of similar problems. Um, we didn't have as much of our business closed down. We probably only lost 35%. Um, but something, uh, Kate, you mentioned about how important people are and, and people are key. We learned last year that people really are key. Um, you know when we we completely burnt down and we, we became gypsy distillers with no premises and and i think that gave us a little advantage um it might sound a strange thing to say but our entire team were used to adversity you know we spent last april until two weeks before the pandemic um scratching around in temporary offices um, outsourcing distilling sending our distillers to the premises our premises opened two weeks before lockdown. We got all the team back together. Finally, uh, we had one um, an opening day. Then we had one day where we invited the public in and did a distillery tour. And the pandemic happened the following week, so we had to send everyone home again. Uh, so we're used to it, but we have had to change. Um, last weekend, we did our first ever virtual video tour. Um, I'd seen a few other distilleries doing it and, and, and breweries etc and we had planned a whole range this year of events so it was going to be like six events a week ranging from tours to cocktail nights uh, to tasting experiences they've all had to be shelved so we thought we'd try an online one so Kathy and I came in at 3 30 last Saturday um, we would just put it on Facebook you know, to see what happened and we've had twelve and a half thousand people watch it uh, and we and there was a spike in online sales that day. Um, online sales have really, really, they replaced all of the sales we lost doing the food and drink events. Oh, they've totally replaced that. But they haven't replaced any of the on-trade sales. You know, they've gone for the time being. So doing the uh, virtual tour has given us another idea. We're going to launch gift vouchers um, for, for more of them. But we have a we're going to have a balancing act there because we don't want to sell five thousand gift vouchers for proper tours that we're going to do in the future, uh, and only have a thousand places this year. So we're going to have to get the balance right. You don't want people complaining that I bought a voucher for something and I can't book onto it for like nine or ten months time. So we might even have to limit that. Um, but it, it, it's certainly exciting and interesting, and you have to think outside the box. Some ideas we have are probably bad ones, um, but with the digital world, you can always try things. Uh, and it, it, it's been a it's been a great relief. The difference is, that I'd much rather send two pallets of gin to Matthew Clark because it takes about half an hour to prepare. You know, they're one of the wholesalers, rather than have to send out a hundred bottles individually packaged a day, and every single person seems to want a gift note writing out with it. <laughs> well, there's a lot more work involved. Uh, and every gin brand in the country now seems to be online advertising. So the amount of marketing we're having to spend, uh, sometimes we're just breaking even. Mm. It, I it, think so. So, so, Cal, you missed at the start. As part of our recovery plan, we're launching a Yorkshire gift card whereby people can lock in spend to Yorkshire. And that might be actually the, the, the research is that people who buy gift cards tend to live uh, for a destination gift card outside of the area. So Harrogate, for example, has one, um, okay. and I think 17% around Christmas time came from North America. So it's people that live across the world that are buying for people that live in a destination to go, do you know what? We don't really know what to buy them, but this gift card enables them a variety. 
And actually, the reason we're doing it is to lock in spend to the county so that at the end of the year, we can say, do you know what? £300,000 of the gift cards have been bought and they've been sold. That could be Leeds Playhouse. It could be, you know, Lean Lunch. It could be anywhere. Uh, so we're going to start going around with some questions we've got on Twitter. But I'll start with yourself, Carl and, and, and Joe. Uh, and this comes from Rob Cowling. It's, it's particular to, I suppose, the hospitality trade, which is about to open on the 4th of July, we hope. Um, what are you hearing your intelligence from pubs and, and hostelries? Have I just used the word hostelries? Does anyone use that anymore? Around their expectations <laughs> of footfall once they reopen. And how is that looking in terms of pre-orders coming through to your distillery and the brewery? Uh, also, do you envisage a further shift in where you focus your effort? Supermarkets, home delivery, I think you've covered that to a point. But yeah, what, what are your thoughts? How many pubs are going to open and how are they preparing in terms of you know stocking levels? So, Joe, we'll we'll go to you and then we'll come back to Carl, if that's OK. Yeah. Can you hear me OK? My, yeah. my, it dropped out a little bit. I think um, the, we are I mean, we are planning or aiming at that 4th of July uh, date for pub openings. The problem we have is, um, and, and it was mentioned earlier about guidance from the government, the government has still not been clear on what the rules will be for those pub openings. So it's very difficult at the moment to plan. We're, we're all, we have brewed beer, as you see, we, we were talking about it online the other week. We brewed our first cask beer for, for since March, a couple of weeks ago. So we, we have some, reasonable forward orders from from the pub side of things but what we don't know is if the government says that the rule is going to be two meters within a pub that makes an enormous difference to if they say uh one meter so i think what we're looking at you know if it's a, if it sticks at two meters i think you're only going to see 20 or 25 percent of the pubs bear in mind there's just north of 50,000 pubs in the uk you're only going to see 20 or 25 percent of pubs being able to open and be commercially viable. I think if you bring that social distancing down to a one meter level, then we we would think that you know you're into 70 or 80 percent of pubs could manage it. So it really does hinge on 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 what the government is going to decide. Um, and of course, we need you know it needs to be done sensibly, and 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 people's safety is paramount. But uh, we really do need clarity on it, otherwise um, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Yeah, Carl, on, on, on the clarity point, um, and we, we heard it from Kate about, you know, knowing when we can open and will, it, will furlough be extended? Um, and, 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 and Sat referred to, you know, uh, having to change and adapt depending on what the government advice was. When, when will office workers be back at work officially? Carl, do you, I suppose it's a question for all of you, but I'm preparing one on the chat box to send to all of you. But, you know, have, have, how, what role have the government played, good, bad or indifferent for you in terms of some of the decisions they've made have been the right ones, but perhaps the criticism has been too, 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 too late in the day or the night before. No, you know, you can open certain parts of the sectors, but we, we need time to prepare. You, you all do. Uh, I think anyone could sit back and, and criticise the government uh, and there will always be wrong decisions uh, and there will always be right decisions. Um, but I think because this is just like unprecedented circumstances, uh, you know, they might use the excuse that they're following the scientific advice. But I bet there's probably 10 scientists sat in a room all saying different things as well. Um, I think it's all about just pulling together and just trying to get through it rather than trying to blame someone and criticise. Um, I, I think they're doing as good a job as could be expected. I know no one's been trained for this. Um, we, we're not getting clarity on things, um, but then what's happening isn't, there's no clarity. There were still 233 people died yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, we're still in a bit of a, a pandemic. Uh, we're not seeing any advanced orders come through from the on trade at all yet. Um, and, you know, I know we're all hoping for the 4th of July, but I think the, the, the actual official word is that they're not going to be able to open before the 4th, till at least the 4th of July, so it could be later. Uh, and I think unlike beer, uh, which is on a certain shelf life, in the world of spirits, I think every wholesaler that reopens a bar and pub, they're going to want to turn any stock they've got sat on their shelves into cash. So I think they'll be running down stocks of spirits and gin if you want to start buying more. But as far as, yeah, the government might have been able to do things differently, but 
so could all of us. Um, and, yeah. and I don't think it's fair to criticise because none of us knew what was going to happen. No, I agree. As, as someone who's been in charge of a, a team of staff that have been putting to, together quite a lengthy document on a recovery plan, I did say to the staff, I said, listen, you know, you can't win here, so don't, so don't worry. You know, yeah. we, we, you, you can't you can't get it right. Uh, you probably we probably can get it wrong, but I think positive leadership all comes from you know we, we're going to prepare a document that you might want to use if you've not got a recovery plan, but it's not exhaustive. It's quite organic, as you say, 20, 233 deaths yesterday, but the beginning of the week it was. Do you know what? Looks like the death toll's coming down. And then you read about Beijing, it, it's concerning. So um, so interesting that no advanced orders yet. I do think with retail, we saw Monday, there was no, it certainly wasn't Mad Friday or Mad Monday. I think retail analysts are suggesting, and, and Rab, it might be useful to bring you back in here, that next week uh, might be the time that we see the the the, the, the sort of the kid gloves come off going, everyone, do you know what? That was all right, actually. We, we've got through it. But I don't think we're going to see a resurgence just yet. I've put a question on the chat box for you all. So we'll go around the room for just a one minute answer on how we can work together. But Rab, in terms of data, in terms of trends, in terms of insight, coming to you then, how can we all work together? How can the University of Sheffield pull together data and, and open source data to go, do you know what, Kate, we can influence your decisions going forward or, or Sat, you might want to uh, consider this that we're hearing or going back to the pub trade, um, you know, an idea of how we can work together and collaborate. I think that we've actually got to have a change in mentality of leadership. You know, let's look at reducing the competition between us. And again, sorry to harp on, we saw in the ventilator challenge, competitive companies coming together to produce a solution. And it's really got to be about developing those collaborations, those cooperations throughout the supply chain to really create that um, national capability again. And, and some of the others have actually said we need to reshore an awful lot of, and it was, it was Sat's comment about food production. It's the same in manufacturing. But to do that, we've also got to provide the skills. And that is where a critical component comes in from the FE and HE sector of producing the skills that are needed for this digital revolution. Yeah. OK, just turn my camera off there quickly because I'm having some of Joe's beer. Uh, Sat, uh, same question to you. And it's great that there's some crossovers there. Sat, you mentioned food production and we need to look at a sustainable model. Rabbi mentioned the ventilator. So Sat, in 60 seconds or so, I'm sorry to push you. How can we work together and collaborate? Which, you know, going back four or five months, as Rab said, you know, Uber competition, market competition. In fact, we want perfect competition. It sharpens your offer, it sharpens your product and the consumer wins. But Sat, uh, we might not be in that space for a long time. Well, I think it's a really interesting question, particularly the both things tied together, collaboration and being in this together, because everything from understanding who the key workers are at the start of this and what the economy is built on in terms of a bedrock um, has been nothing but a positive outcome. So being in this together and and knowing that the person that's working on the lowest level of wage to stack a supermarket shelf or deliver your Amazon parcel through to the fact that the NHS has been at the forefront of trying to look after us for a lot longer than just now is the being into this together. But to move out of it, we have to collaborate. And therefore, how do we do that? Well, we don't forget the parts of society that we know now should be uh, you know, recognised and respected in a, in a way that hasn't been. I think there's a big society thing in terms of where, I mean, just look at the rate of, um, unfortunately, the rate of deaths based on where you live, you know, it's twice based on poverty. So for me, that's an issue that has to be looked at. How does business support that? I don't know the answer to that, but how do you support independent businesses, businesses locally, that part, I think we need to do more work on. The media does a great job of shining a light on queues around the corner for Primark, McDonald's, um, Starbucks. But but these aren't the companies that look after the people that live around your communities, the people that take the risks. Everybody who starts a business has to take big risks mm. for themselves, 
their families and they do it because they have an idea and they believe in it and they want to go for it. We need to support those people and they're the businesses. So the public needs to be marketed to in the way that the media needs to shine a bigger light on so this idea of supporting local and independence, it, it needs to be really pushed and, and not, we shouldn't be eulogising the fact there's queues for McDonald's. That's just from my heart sinks, you know. On a health level, it's absolutely shocking. But on a, what do they add to our society level? What do they add to our community? What do they add to our region? Nothing, zero. Do they care about Yorkshire? Not one iota. To Theakston, sorry, not Theakston's, Black Sheep, Masons, all these people. They're the people that, that built their businesses here and they employ people here and they care about here. They're the people who I want to support, not, not others. And that's, that's my view. But if we can distill that out and build it and get it stronger and then bring other people into it, I think that for me would be marvellous. All right. Thanks, that excellent contribution. So our colleagues at Irwin Mitchell, Dorian and Rochelle, do you want to finish before we give the final word to Kate and some closing comments on collaboration, how we can work together? Does that mean fees, legal fees are going to go down? Surely that that would help at all, wouldn't it? We, we pride ourselves on being part of our community um, and being nothing without our people. Um, as we are coming out of a forced distancing and out into the communities again I think that's going to be even more important whether that's supporting local businesses supporting the most vulnerable that we've lost sight of perhaps I'm a trustee of several charities some who support some of the most vulnerable in society uh, and they've been fantastically supported by social channels in this difficult time but actually it's really easy to lose sight of that when you all you can see is your your study or your bedroom because you've been forced there for weeks and weeks so I think that's the thing we really need to focus on as we come out of this brilliant thank you Michelle we also have um, we have a very active CSR program um, and we, we take things like diversity, ethnicity, all those really vulnerable groups that are underrepresented in the population. Um, and, you know, we will continue to support people internally, externally um, through all those through all those work streams. We also have um, a massive pro bono. Um, piece of work that goes on. We give free advice to people. You know, obviously we don't we're not shouting about it all the time, but we do support people. And if you looked on the Irwin Mitchell website, you will see that there is tons of information on there, which we've just been pushing out to businesses, uh, to individuals for free, which helps people so that they can get through this to the back end and they'll actually still be able to survive in the market. So um, I definitely urge you to go and have a look on that website because it's a, it's a really impressive database of information. What's the website, Rochelle? Because we'll, we'll tweet that out as well. It's, I can send you the link, but it's the Owen Mitchell website. There's a specific COVID-19 section and it deals with individuals as well as businesses. And it's got all the webinar link links as well. So it's really, really useful information. Excellent. So final word, Kate, before I, I wrap up, we, we mentioned the plight of the of, of your industry and we're talking about collaboration and coming together. But how do you make sure that message is amplified? So it's not a case of, oh, we've lost our cultural, our hearts, our arts um, um, se sector. You could have done something about it. Alas, how do we make sure that doesn't happen right now? Well, we we are doing something about that right now. I think what we realise as well is that we're sat, well, not physically, but there is one person currently sat in our building in Leeds City Centre that has just recently been massively refurbished, completely refurbished. And that as a resource to our city and our region is there and we're talking to um, all kinds of organisations who might be able to use that even if we can't use it for its original purpose. We've also been really well supported by Leeds City Council from a cultural perspective talking to other organisations that we can work with closely so that they can use perhaps that don't usually use our stages might be able to use our stages or um, we have a huge open plan. I mean, we have, you know, issues with our open plan spaces sometimes, but actually that might be the best thing about our building when we go back is that we have space um, to socially distance people. We've been talking to educational institutions as to whether they can use our space to um, run some of their sessions. So we are Collaborating is it's what we do. It's what we do all the time, just even if it's just producing a piece of theatre. So the fact that we can actually use the 
things that we have to make a way through to the future, I think, is um, is is how we plan to do it. Well, thank you, Kate. And again, the offers there from Welcome to Yorkshire. Um, we, we used a hashtag at the start of this, which was Yorkshire together because uh, we believe it. Um, you know, it does it does it, it does combine both regionality. It combines um, uh, offers across the sector. We've spoken about food and drink. We've spoken about, you know, uh, services provided with we, the, and then the real rich, you know, entertainment, uh, you know, soul food that you would get from from Leeds um, Playhouse. So we are in this together. Please use our social channels. You know, Chris and Emma are on here. Um, again, if anyone's watching, you know, we're there to amplify messages. You know, we, we can connect with a million people, which is not, you know, is not insignificant. So thanks for all for joining today. And uh, that's Joe, Rab, Carl, Rochelle, Dorian, Sat, Kate, uh, Emma in the background, Pete and Chris from Welcome to Yorkshire. If anyone wants to uh, log on to this later on, we'll post it on our our website uh, and that's the industry.com uh, industry.yorkshire.com slash resources slash webinars but I think if you just google as you'll find it um, feedback on this will continue for the next few hours uh, so thank you for all um, your input today we'll do this again uh, and we'll copy you into the tweets later on we'll get you we'll let you go have your lunch now everyone but thank you very much and we'll speak to you later um, we're probably going offline now am I okay to take a quick picture to do the old we've just had a webinar if no one wants to be on it say so now if not we'll take that as an okay thumbs up is that right yep cool <laughs> If you said no, we wouldn't have copied you into the tweet, so that's fine. <laughs> but, uh, have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye, Bye now.